Hello and welcome back to Planet Nibiru. It has been a minute since we have done a Mandela Effect video and this one is a whopper. It is jam-packed with so much residual proof that I have been sent by viewers and collected myself over the past few months that it is now hard for anyone to deny that something is going on. Please watch the whole video because the last two pieces of evidence are so strong, so bulletproof, that I believe it will blow the lid off this phenomenon for good. Seriously, watch and see for yourself. So let's start with updating some of the residuals we have already presented. First up, the book. Most of you will remember the book English Alive that we found that was published in 1991 stating that Ma Nelson Mandela died in 1991. You will also remember that I have tried several times to contact one of the authors, Kathleen Hugh. I emailed her at her university email address three times with no reply. So, either the university is filtering the email as spam or something, or she does not want to be associated with this effect. Since then, one of our astute community members has found her on LinkedIn, the job networking social media site. I'm a member of LinkedIn, and I have extended her an invite on there last week. I have not heard back from her yet, but I will let you know how this goes. This is not unusual since most people only check their LinkedIn infrequently or when they are actively seeking a job, so I am still hoping to connect with her and get some answers. I have also received about 200 comments saying that the book was written in 1990 and published in 1991 just four months after his death, so how could they have known about his death beforehand? We covered this in the first video, but for those of you who didn't get it the first time or didn't read my reply to your comment, or if you're just new to this, the book was written in 1990 by high school students as part of an English language class. The book was published as a textbook as part of a series by the same name, English Alive, by the two professors Anita Kennett and Kathleen Hugh, who are both listed as the authors of the book in the WorldCat online library catalog. The book is 54 pages long, and on the very last page of the book is where it is mentioned that Nelson Mandela has died. This is most likely an epilogue or glossary section, as almost every textbook I have ever read has some type of section like this in the back. So the question remains regarding why the book states this, and we will have to continue trying to contact Kathleen Hugh for information from her. If anyone can get a line on Anita Kennett, please let me know. I cannot find any way to contact her. I've spent hours digging through social media sites and through the South African library and university systems with no luck at all. She may have gotten married and changed her last name or something, so we will just have to let that one play out. I have also received hundreds of comments from viewers and the community members stating that they not only remember him dying, but they remember his funeral, some remember a lawsuit involving his wife, Winnie Mandela, some folks remember a charity event uh, or a concert and celebrities wearing t-shirts that bore his prison number and to show their support uh, for the dead leader. Some comments refer to some people being taught this in school in the classroom, that he was dead, that he had died in prison, and the list goes on and on and on. We have all seen the video of former President Bush during his presidency stating that Mandela is dead. Mandela's dead. We even have a German radio network magazine that reported his death six months before it actually happened in 2013. In this issue of Deutsche Welle, they dedicated the cover to his supposed passing earlier in 2013. But somehow, it took the rest of the world and Mr. Mandela six more months to catch up to the article. So, there is some pretty decent residual evidence out there pointing to that one single facet of this phenomenon that is named after Mr. Mandela. However, there are so many facets to this phenomenon that it's hard to imagine that anyone can deny its existence, but yet they do. We have covered the Volkswagen logo and Ford logo changes to death, so we will skip past the tons of evidence for those having changed as well as the changes to the locations of Australia, Sicily, and the entire continent of South America, which has all been covered and documented. So let's move on to some new residuals that I think are shocking and not only add to the case for the Mandela Effect, but literally prove that it's real and happening. We will start small and we will end up with a bang building in importance as we go. And believe me, it is a big bang coming. There was a big hubbub about Mickey Mouse not having suspenders in this new timeline, but I was recently sent a screenshot where he is clearly rocking some red suspenders. 
Now, is this residual proof? Maybe so. Or maybe it's just a one-off. The Monopoly guy in this timeline has no monocle. However, I have also received several images of him with the monocle. Sure, these could be photoshopped, so I will not say they are absolute proof, but you can take them at face value and decide how much weight to give them. Monocles and suspenders aside, let's talk about something that we have all experienced. Vaseline. I don't know how many times I have seen one of these containers in my life, but it has to be in the thousands. Every household in America has at least one tub of Vaseline in it somewhere, I'm sure. It's great for everything. Chapped lips, dry hands, dry skin, rub rashes, the list goes on and on. I have even used it to grease certain parts on tools and things like that, and it works great. I love Vaseline. I even love the Stone Temple Pilots song named Vaseline, which oddly enough is spelled with an O, not an E. Because you see in this reality or timeline or whatever you want to call it, Vaseline has no O. Nope. V-A-S-E-L-I-N-E -E is how it is spelled now and seemingly always has been. The problem is that we find so many people misspelling the word, like right here on this website. With the picture of the jar right under the title, you'd think that a professional blogger might get the spelling of the product and the subject of their article right, right? Well, maybe not. Now, of course, words get misspelled all the time. And Vaseline sounds a lot like gasoline. So maybe that is why it is so often misspelled? Sure, that might be possible. However, I was recently sent some images that clearly show that at one point, there were some jars out there using the O in the spelling, not the E. Not only that, but in this medical textbook called Methods of Adipose Tissue Biology, and this is on Google Books, by the way, they use the O in the spelling. Again, we can attribute the spelling to a mere error on the part of the technical writer who wrote the book and the editor who missed the misspelling, or maybe Vaseline used to be spelled with an O. The pictures that were sent to me seemingly suggest that it was. Okay, so let's do some rapid fire ones because the video is getting a little bit longer than I intended, and I know I'll get some complaints from those of you guys out there with ADD, so. We all know JCPenney now has an E at the end of it. JCPenney, P-E-N-N-E-Y is how it is spelled now. But did it always? Let's take a look at these images. How about those cup noodles? Now this is one that irks me to no end. Having probably survived on these things for years when I was younger, I swear it was cup o noodles, and here is some residual proof that proves that at least I am not the only one who remembers it that way. Now it seems like the folks over at Lucas Arts have a problem remembering that C3PO had a silver leg because as it turns out, they put him in a video game with two gold legs on it. And they put him on a pinball machine hood, again, with two gold legs. What gives you guys? So yeah, stick around for one more massive Star Wars reveal at the end of this video. I'm saving that for the second to last because it is huge. huge. So Star Wars, love you, and we'll get back to you. Okay, on to music. There is a song by Panic at the Disco called I Write Sins, Not Tragedies. And in this song, there is a line that says, haven't you people ever heard of closing a goddamn door? The problem comes in because mostly everyone I have spoke to and who has heard the song and who has loved the song are adamant that the song always said, haven't you people ever heard of closing the goddamn door? Now this isn't a huge difference, but people are very passionate when it comes to this one. So much that another well-known singer named Halsey was so affected by this that she even contacted the lead singer of Panic at the Disco and asked him about it. His response is classic because it clearly proves that there is some residual proof of the Mandela Effect happening and that the Mandela Effect is real. His reply 
was that this is some Berenstein Berenstein bear shit right here. So he is clearly blaming the Mandela effect for this lyric change. What can you say to that? This is coming from the guy who wrote the song. All I can say is boom. Mm. Speaking of which, sticking with the music theme for a moment, we have the lyrics to Boom Boom Pow by the Black Eyed Peas. Now this song was released in 2008 and the lyric, as most people remember it, is I'm so 2008 and you're so 2000 late, which makes sense. Fergie is saying that she is very current and hip and everyone else just sucks and we're not all with it and hip like she is. However, the song lyrics nowadays read, I'm so 3008 instead of 2008. So I just don't get it. Why would she say I'm so 3008 and you're so 2000 late? It doesn't really make sense, does it? Maybe someone will corner her or Will I Am and get their take on the lyric change, but it just doesn't sound right to me. I was never that big of a fan, so I can't say for sure, but many people are saying it was always 2008, and that makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense is that the Statue of Liberty has discreetly moved from Ellis Island to a place called Liberty Island. Now there are thousands of people who swear that the statue resided on Ellis Island, welcoming immigrants from the world over as they entered the United States. The inscription on a plaque in the pedestal at its base tells the story nicely, I think. It says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. It's part of a poem written during the fundraising campaign to fund the base pedestal for the statue that was given to us as a gift from France. Ellis Island has long been the destination for those who wish to become a U.S. citizen and in the minds of many, including myself, it was a home to the statue as well. But it seems that we were all wrong. Personally, I have never spent any time in New York City. Being from Boston, I have been through New York City many times while traveling, but I have never really stopped in as a tourist and seen the sights, so to speak. But people who have visited New York City, and the statue itself several times, even swear that it was located on Ellis Island. But, I'll be honest with you, I've been to New York twice. Uh, and when I went to New York, the Statue of Liberty was on Ellis Island. <laughs> I remember learning in school that it was located on Ellis Island, and that always made sense to me because of the immigration thing. But nope, it's on Liberty Island, and we're all just going to have to get used to that fact. Okay, getting bigger and more profound as we move on, it's time to get biblical. We have what many, myself included, consider to be smoking gun evidence that changes are occurring. In the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 6, has changed in all major versions of the Bible. From the lion shall lay with the lamb, to the wolf shall lay with the lamb. Now you don't even have to be a Christian to be affected by this one. So many people who aren't even Christians know this verse. It has in itself become a saying of sorts when referring to things in life that are out of sorts or backwards or when things go wrong and don't make sense people sometimes even use this verse as a reference to end times events but the evidence is overwhelming that this verse did in fact state the lion and the lamb just look at all the religious imagery out there that refers to this passage there are literally thousands of images of lions laying beside a lamb you can look at them all day long on different websites and on Google and everywhere else. Yet there are very few images of a wolf laying beside a lamb. There's an old film called Sergeant York starring Gary Cooper. In this film there is an old man reading this verse from the Bible. She'll be much obliged if I could have a cup of water. Got some nip inside her. Well that'd go mighty good. I'll be getting it. And the lion shall lie down with the lamb and it clearly states the lion will lay beside the lamb so again this is clear evidence that something is going on and now we're going to move on to the two biggest ones that i have found these two are so profound that if you ask me these are like smoking gun type of stuff like they are completely huge 
So the first is a toy that is made by Lucas Arts, which is the company owned by George Lucas, the creator of all things Star Wars. So it is an official toy from the official creator of the official film series, and it says... Join me. Together, we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Wait a minute, he didn't just say what I think he did, did he? Um, yeah. The official toy from George Lucas's company says, Luke, I am your father. This is like atomic evidence of the Mandela effect right here. This is like gar Godzilla sized gargantuan proof that the line existed at one point. I know there will be at least one silly troll who will come out here and say, well, it's for context in the toy, but it was never said in the movie, blah, 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 blah. Dude, stop. Don't even. You're just embarrassing yourself, so just stop talking. The, the toy says, Luke, I am your father. Why would they license a toy with that line if it was never the actual line? doesn't make any sense. Special thanks to Dr. Taryn P. Lupo's channel where I found this gem. Go check him out, he has some great stuff on there for both Mandela Effect and free living and free thinking. Also special thanks to one of our community members, Janine, for turning me on to Taryn P. Lupo and his channel where I found this gem. And finally, the coup de grace of all Mandela Effect residuals was sent in to the Better Mankind channel and it shows the JFK car with only four people in it as many of us remember it. It is not from the Zabruder film, it's an image that clearly shows Jackie Kennedy wearing that iconic outfit that she was wearing that day in Dallas looking over at John Kennedy in the back of a convertible with four seats and four people. After looking around the internet over the course of a few days I could not find any other images of her wearing that outfit while in a convertible. So to me, this is thermonuclear proof, proof of the Mandela effect. I mean, how can it get any better than this? Just the way so many of us remember seeing it, just the way so many of us remember uh, watching it on the film when we were young or before these these changes started taking place which for me seemed to be around 2012 sometime it's amazing 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 really it's more than amazing it's proof so I'm gonna end this video here my mind is blown I'm sure many of yours are as well so let this sink in and please comment on what you think of all this leave us a thumbs up if you like it and we'll be back soon with another video. Thanks. Hey folks, I just wanted to take a quick minute to let you know that our Spreadshirt store is up and running. It's a great way to show support for the channel and our search for truth. We have a bunch of cool Planet X based designs as well as some very cool pop culture and geographical designs that we think you will love. Our designs are created from some of the things that we love most. Our search for truth, movies that we love, and TV shows we grew up on. These cool original designs will make great conversation starters, especially if someone else recognizes the significance of the logo or slogan. So click on the link and visit our Spreadshirt store today. As always, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting on our videos. We will be back soon with more great stuff. See you then.